Minister, I've actually been raising matters related to this issue, this very issue we're discussing today, veterinary medicines, and for a number of years now, and I suppose my concerns were that it would damage the rural economy if the proposals went ahead um, not to allow responsible persons to, uh, to prescribe all medicines as, as it was uh, formerly and previously for many years, and what always worked very well, given that the responsible persons were very knowledgeable and understood the farmer's needs. Needs. I and my colleagues in the Rural Independent Group had hoped that you, Minister, would move more quickly to provide assurances to licensed merchants and that you would take on board the recommendations from the committee report issued last year. And I do want to say that it was an absolute pleasure uh, to be in um, on this discussion at that Agriculture Committee where there was cross-party unity. Uh, on the committee in relation to this issue and in relation to the fact that our licensed merchants need to be protected and, and respected in this regard. And I know my, my colleague Deputy Michael Collins has done a lot of work on, on this matter on the committee also. The report also strongly recommended that the Department of Agriculture ensure the continuation of the existing network which includes licensed merchants and veterinary pharmacists as recognised route of supply of antiparasitic medicines. It now seems, however, that the government has seen fit to prioritise the views of the EU and indeed the advice of the Attorney General, which was also sought on this very matter. This is despite clear evidence that a derogation was possible for the agri-merchants. I know from my engagement with the Independent Licensed Merchants Association that something in excess of 900 licensed merchants operate throughout this country, of which an estimated 200 are owner-operated, either exclusively supplying veterinary medicines and allied inputs or general farm supply stores, supplying a range of other farm requirements including hardware, feedstuff and fertilisers. As I said in August of 2021, the Department of Agriculture just seemed determined to pursue a new regulatory regime that would erode the capacity of the responsible persons to prescribe and sell antiparasitic veterinary medicines. Minister, it is difficult to overstate the level of concern that now exists within the agri-merchant sector following the decision of the Department to pursue the regulatory approach outlined in this Bill. As I say, it makes a complete mockery of the extensive Oireachtas Agriculture Committee investigation of this matter and the excellent and balanced report that it subsequently issued. It also makes a mockery of the cross-party unity that existed within that committee on this very issue, uh, most of the time it's fair to say. Are we seriously expected to believe that the report, which explicitly called for the continuation of the existing network, which includes licensed merchants and veterinary pharmacists as recognised route of supply of anti-parasitic medicines, was somehow reckless in its recommendations or deficient in its insight? It's difficult to avoid the conclusion that the Department has simply set aside the solutions on offer in order to pursue and implement a decision that it had already arrived at prior to the beginning of the entire consultation process. And I'll, I'll end on that note. My time is up, Chair, is it? Uh, not 15 seconds. Okay, I'll just end. When I raised this matter with the Taoiseach in May of 2021, Taoiseach Michal Martin, he stated that he did not want to see a cliff-edge scenario where employment was jeopardised and rural economy threatened. But I feel that's precisely at the situation we've arrived at and it's unacceptable.